In the last video, we started to talk about how general relativity describes gravity as the consequence of the curvature of space-time, that gravity is just geometry, and how if I put a heavy object in space, it will distort and change the geometry of the space-time around it. So what I want to do in this video is talk a little bit about what does it mean to have a different geometry or, or warp geometry? Um, because most of us are used to the kind of geometry that we're introduced to in, in elementary school. Say the kind of geometry where if I have two straight two lines and uh, a third line uh, intersects both of those lines, if these two angles are 90 degrees, are, are right angles, then these two lines have to be parallel and they will never intersect no matter no matter how far you go. Or the uh, kind of geometry where if I have a, a triangle and I add up the angles of that triangle, then the, the angle sum will equal 180 degrees. These are the kind of rules that we see in our in our early geometry classes in, in elementary school or high school. This kind of geometry, uh, which was thought to be the only kind of geometry that that uh, is actually present in the real world for hundreds of years, uh, that was the belief, this is referred to as Euclidean geometry. And it assumes that space is flat. Now, there are other kinds of geometries that we can have. Let's say I have a sphere. And uh, I'll draw the equator of that sphere. Let's say I have, I start at the equator and go towards the North Pole. I start at some point on the equator and go to the North Pole. Then I change directions and go back to the equator and I hit the equator, and then I return to my original point. Well, we notice a couple of things that, first that all of these are straight lines. These angles are 90 degrees. So, and, and this angle is going to be, you know, some other angle, we don't know what that is. But comparing it with this picture, we have two lines that are intersect are intersected by another line, the equator, and they form 90 degree angles, just like this one. But where these two will never intersect, these two lines do intersect at the North Pole. We also notice that the, the angle sum, if we look at this triangle formed by these three lines, the sum of the interior angles is actually greater than 180 degrees. We have right triangle, so 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus whatever angle this is. It's going to be greater than 180 degrees. So this is a very different kind of geometry than we describe in with just flat space. I can have a different kind of geometry, a, a saddle shaped geometry, and we'll see how my artistic ability is here. Something that looks like this. So we have some sort of saddle shape. Oh, uh, that line should go this way, I think. So we get this weird saddle shape, and if I do the same thing in here, I can I can make a triangle, and on this sort of a shape, a triangle might look a little bit like this. And in this case, the the sum of the angles, the angle sum for this triangle is going to be less than 180 degrees. There, there are yet other uh, complications. Let's say, uh, let's go back to flat space for a minute, and I'll draw this just up here. Let's say I have a vector pointing in some direction, just an arrow. Well, I can move that arrow wherever I want. So I can move it first this way, and then I'll move it this way, and then I'll move it back. So this green arrow just moves around this track and comes back and returns to the same point that it originally was. Well, let's do the same thing 
with the sphere. So I'm going to draw my sphere again. I'm going to draw this sphere. And I'm going to follow the path that I described at the top, that I described up here. I'm going to go around in this direction. And as this vector goes around the circle, let's say I start with this vector. As it goes around, it's going to change its direction. It's going to be pushed and still be pointing straight on this curved space. So we go up to the North Pole and then we go, we continue to move this back down to the equator. So it might be pointing in that direction now. And then if we bring it along the equator back to where we started, we notice that the starting vector is different than what we get when we move it around this curve. This is a this is a strange effect of of non-flat space times, of non non-flat spaces actually. So we see these weird effects with the with these uh, non-flat geometries. So what can we still say is the same? Well, we still have the idea of a straight line. And that is going to be just the shortest distance between two points. So shortest, shortest, shortest distance uh, between, between any two points. And the word that we're going to de use to describe this on, on these kind of curved spaces is a, geode a geodesic. So when we talk about relativity, uh, general relativity and, and uh, gravity, we're going to be talking a lot about these geodesics, these shortest distances on these curved, curved spaces. So for instance, for uh, a sphere, if I have two points, then the shortest distance between those is going to be what's called a great sphere, kind of an equator-like line around it, or... Uh, lines of longitude are also great spheres because I could extend this uh, this yellow line all the way around the back of the sphere and we have a notion of what a straight line is in uh, in these curved spaces. Then we also have an idea of a metric which measures which is a way that we measure length. So, for instance, we talked a little bit about this in the special relativity video, uh, the metric. We know that in flat space we have Pythagoras theorem. So if we have, if we have, uh, I guess I'll go down here. If we have a right angle triangle and A, B, and C, then we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I want to know this length, then but and I know the components, I know an X component and a Y component, I can calculate that length. But when I have curved space, these metrics are going to be different. And then I have a notion of curvature, which is related, which is going to be related to how the sum of these, uh, the sum of the angles in a triangle add up, and can also be related to how if I take this, uh, this arrow and move it around in a circle, in some circle, how much did that arrow change when I moved it around in that circle? Those are both uh, notions of curvature. Now, before I finish, there are two points that I, that, I wanna, that I wanna make very clear. When we're talking about general relativity, all of the assumptions of special relativity are still at work. So we still have to be careful with different observers in different frames of reference will perceive space and time in different ways. So when we talk about curvature and, and things like the metric and straight lines, we're going to be talking about these things in space-time. We, we, can't, we can't easily distinguish who sees something as time and who sees something as space. So we're always going to be talking about curvature 
and the metric and straight lines and geodesics on space time. The other thing that I want to be very clear about, and this is going to be extremely important when we talk about things like, especially like uh, the expansion of the universe. When I drew this picture, I drew this picture and everyone sees this as I have some, some 3D space and I have a sphere sitting in this 3D space. And this geometry is a 2D surface sitting in a 3D space. But it's very important, and when we talk about space-time, we might say, well, if I'm describing a 3D spatial geometry, does that mean there has to be some four-dimensional higher space that, that this object is sitting in? That is not the case. We do not need to have, when I draw this sphere, I do not need to have this higher dimensional space that this sphere is, is sitting in. I can fully describe the, the metric, the curvature of, and, and the, the geodesics of this sphere on the surface of this sphere without ever referring to any kind of higher dimensional space. It helps us visualize, uh, in some cases it helps us visualize this space, but you don't need some higher dimensional space in order to have these strange curved geometries. So, so I'll definitely talk about that more when we talk about uh, the expansion of the universe because that's a very common misconception uh, when we say I'm going to draw this as my universe and it's expanding and we say it's expanding into some higher dimensional space. It doesn't actually have to be doing that. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The important thing is that when we describe a curved space like this, it doesn't have to be embedded or, or placed in some higher dimensional, higher dimensional space.